Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got another museum uh, episode for you guys today, and today we're going to take a look at three very old, rare Johan kits. And they're in really good condition for their age, uh, complete, based on everything I can look at right there, and I want to share those with you today. So, let's get started! So let's talk about Johan models in the late 1950s. And please, if at any time I make a mistake, big or small, um, it won't be the first time I've ever done that, please go ahead in the comment center down below uh, and, and correct me on that. I appreciate any time that if I'm wrong about something, I always want to learn what the actual correct thing is. But I've tried my hardest to try to get this information as correct as possible. I would also like to thank the YouTube channel, Max's Models. If you guys are not familiar with him, he does some incredibly interesting uh, behind the scenes of model manufacturers as they were starting out, and I would highly recommend you go check out his channel. So in the mid to late 1950s, Johan was primarily known as a dealership promo maker, and they would make up kits like this that the, uh, the dealerships could have on hand in multiple colors and give them out as, as a, a promotional device to sell the cars at that time. And they would either be just like this with uh, just a static model or sometimes ha have a friction motor on the bottom as well. And at this time, uh, Johan wanted to branch out more into the plastic model kits. Now there was companies like Revell and AMT and SMP that were producing model kits and Johan wanted a little bit of that action, but was a little hesitant to jump fully into it. So after seeing companies like AMT produce these customizing kits, and the kits I'm about to show you first, these are all real vintage kits, which eventually I will do a YouTube video on these as well. But uh, I'm gonna show you a few of these customizing kits that had come out roughly at the time. Some of them may have come out a little bit um, later than that, but it'll give you the general idea. This is one of the, uh, the AMT customizing kits. Also this one right here, the 49 Ford Club Coupe customizing kit. And you'll notice the big thing that was going on is they were three in one. So you could do a stock, a custom, and a competition. And that seemed to be the really big thing at the time. Then there was also a company called SMP which uh, definitely you want to see the video on how AMT eventually absorbed uh, and bought up SMP. In fact, if you notice, the logo is very, very similar between the two companies. But the three-in-one was super popular at that time. And one other old SMP kit I want to share with you is this one right here, the 1960 uh, customizing convertible kit. Once again, too, we'll tear into that one eventually. And finally, Ravel was also making a bunch of customizing kits too. And you can see this is actually this is actually a vintage example of that same thing. So like I was saying, Johan saw the success that SMP, AMT, and Ravel were all having with this, and they decided they were gonna slowly branch out into the plastic model business as well. And that is when they came out with this. This is a very, very old, rare kit. This is from Johan Models. This is the 1959 Oldsmobile Sports Sedan. And this one, along with this, this is another very rare kit. And mainly rare because of the box itself. And not only do we have the original promotional box, but also the original promotional uh, paperwork that goes inside, which I'm gonna show you all of that before the end of the video. But these two kits are basically the identical thing. So what they did is they, they molded up the body and produced it into a uh, promo to give away at the dealerships, but then also molded up the body as well as a bunch of aftermarket parts and built into model kits here. And it's, it's really cool, I think, to have both of these side by side. And now we're gonna open up first the promotional one, the one that you would get, actually get at the dealership. Okay, let's pull this out carefully here. And this is it right here. This is a original 1959 Oldsmobile. 
made in the, uh, the very unusual type of plastic, cellulose acetate. And cellulose acetate, and in fact, Johan was actually one of the last companies to fully go away from that. Companies like AMT and SMP had switched over to polystyrene, uh, but they were a little bit hesitant on that. And because of that, you'll be able to see right away the warping up in the, uh, the hood here, as well as, look at that, that is the Johan smile. So you see how this whole thing is cupping right here and pulling away. And that's how you knew it was a cellulose acetate type piece. So you can see how this was given away at a dealership. And also the color too. The color, they would dye these in the, the color, approximate color of the, the new model years that were coming out to give someone a representation. Hey, I want to see what, what that actual color of the car would look like if they didn't have like any on the, on the lot. They'd say, and I have to apologize. I, I'm assuming this is like a seafoam green. Hey, I'd like to see what that 59 Olds looked like in a seafoam green. And they would have this. They would pull this out, show it to them. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they initially they gave these away. And then eventually the dealership started charging for them. But you can see what great condition this is. I know there is some, some crazing on the windows here. And we've got the, uh, the smile and the other warping. But from what I understand, that is completely normal with all of these type of kits. So we're going to move this to the back here for a minute. And of course, we showed you the box, the promo box. But this, you guys know me with... Uh, Vintage advertising, this is the thing I love the most here, is the original promo advertising. Nothing, let me move the camera for a sec. Okay, so let's open this up a little bit more above so you can read it here. And this was the promotional material that would be inside to help sell the real car. And I have, this is the first time ever I've seen any of this promotional stuff. You know, I've heard about it, and I, obviously I've seen a lot of promo car kits like this one right here over the years, but never actually any of the promotional material that went along with it. And in my opinion, the box and this, uh, and this stuff right here is more valuable, not necessarily money, monetarily, but more valuable to me just to be able to see how cool this old stuff is. Very, very cool. Now, let's take a look at the actual same same body in a customizable actual model kit. And here we are. Here is the really rare Johan. This is the very first customizable car kit that Johan came out as a plastic model kit. This is the one that started them on down the road on that. And remember, it shares the same body as the uh, the other kit I just showed you. Now the chassis I'll show you also is slightly different. So they did make it a little bit different. And also this kit is made out of actually regular plastic. It's not made out of the uh, the cellulose acetate. So let's pull this bad boy apart here. I'll put, we'll show you the instructions in a bit, but um, carefully pull this out. And right off, you can see, same kit, but there's no smile on the front because it's real plastic, so it's going to hold up like it, like a regular model kit would. And all of this is the uh, the same. I believe the interior tub is the same, but this is the part that is actually different, and only slightly. Let me grab the the other bottom, and I'll show you. And here are the two chassis side by side, and you see on the promo one. It's got the exclusive guard beam frame, and then the actual plastic model kit is actually, you know, licensed or, yeah, yeah, as a trademark. General Motors right here, but then the Johan name for the plastic model kit right there. And we'll pull some of the, the parts out of here gently. First of all, we've got a set of customizing decals. I guess in 1959, those were really, really cool looking. And then all of the other little accessory parts. So like this, these are all the customizing parts that you could add this on to, to store the rear tire back here. It's got the, uh, the cover for the, the spare, just like that. And I was talking to someone who knew about these kits pretty well and said, 
feel the tires. They are rock hard. They are an actual type of rubber, but even back when these first came out, they were rock hard, and they still are. They're really rock hard tires. And we've got our, our dash right here. And we have our wheel covers right here. And these right here, these are the louvers. Now, when I first looked at these louvers, I thought, well, maybe maybe these didn't belong inside this kit because it didn't look the same as the promo kit. But then after reading the instructions, I find you cut these in half and you would just drop the, the louvers. It says wherever you want on the deck lid here. And, you know, you're going to customize your own car kit up. And just some of the other little parts. We've got all of the, uh, the lights. See that right there? The, uh, the two axles are in here and a bunch of other little accessories that I like these little pieces right there. So you can see what they did. They, they took the body, the window, and the, uh, the inside uh, of the tub, seats, things like that, put it all together, molded a new bottom, and now they were in the plastic model game just alongside SMP and AMT, Ravel, and we're going to be some good competition for them because they're a very, very cool kit. And it's so cool to see something this old. And finally, here are the instructions. And as you can see, they're, they're pretty old, so they have a little bit of burning on them. And here's what I was talking about with the, uh, the extra stuff like the louvers, the uh, Continental tire cover, the chrome insert for it, and then how the bumper extension would go on here as well. And I was reading the, instru the instructions here, and they just said, yeah, you kind of drop them wherever you see fit, and plus that little fin in there, and then the different fender mirrors, things like that. And funny thing is, is when I first took a uh, look at this, I mean, obviously this matches the cover art, but when you flip this over here, it talks about the torsion bars, and this particular kit did not have torsion bars, so I thought... Well, maybe I have the wrong instructions, but I talked to someone that is um, quite an expert on these and knows a lot about the Johan models, and I just happened to briefly mention that to him, and he said, now, these were kind of a generic instructions that they used for, uh, for a few of the different kits that they were coming out with, so if it may have had torsion bars, may have not had it, but they just threw that inside there, and then about the way of, like, pounding the axle on with some wooden blocks so you didn't break it, but uh, quite a quite a time capsule to the past here I would say very very interesting especially to see you know the beginning of how Johan got in away from not, I guess not getting not away from but more towards plastic models than the promo kits and this is the one that started it all and now for a little bonus on this I also uh, found this kit as well and this is a 1962 Dodge Dart convertible and it's one of the customizing kits, one of the very early customizing kits. In fact, uh, looking at the side of the box, I believe this is a 1962 kit by the way the advertising is done on the side because it's advertising the you know what other 1962 kits are coming out at the same time, both convertibles and hardtops. You can see the old tape on here. So um, this side of the box unfortunately got a little, uh, little road rash on it, but uh, the rest of the box is in, I would say, fairly decent condition, considering its age. But uh, let's take a look inside this kit here. First off, one of the, the uh, telltale signs that it's an old kit is the handmade boxes, how they uh, taped and, you know, like a glue tape, put those together. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this to the side here, and then I'm going to show you up close the detailing on all these parts. So you can see what 1962 mold technology looked like close up. And here is the chrome tree. And a great fact that I learned on the Max's Models video on Johan kits is the fact that Johan is the one that developed this outer frame around the uh, the model parts kit. So in before that, it was always coming like this, just random parts on a uh, on the trees. This one, they came up with this, and this obviously is the norm now. Everything is done this way, and it really protects all the parts quite a bit. But look how nice. Remember, 1962. That is a, a real craftsman back then did that. And here's our instrument gauge with our uh, dashboard. 
some of the other accessories. So it looks like they hadn't fully gone to wrapping the uh, the sprue around the edge there. And then we're going to pull out our body here now too. We've got a little little schmutz on here, but uh, I don't want to want to take anything off and damage anything. And then what you see up close. Right down to the lettering on the front of the of the body. Here we are with the the chassis, and this is one of the ones that had the torsion bars in it too. And I'll actually show you those torsion bars in just a sec. Here's our convertible top, and here is our hood, and here are the torsion bars right here. Now remembering this is a, a customizing kit. Unfortunately, a little bit of the decals were cut off of this, but still enough here that we can see what they were going for with the, uh, the flames all over the place. And then of course you could do the NASCAR stuff right here. And then quickly we will look at the instructions. And it looks like these instructions got a little bit more intricate than uh, just a few years previous. I'll let you see the front right there. Well, there you go, guys. There's our blast to the past, taking a look at some vintage uh, Johan kits, both the uh, promo as well as the, the first couple of customizing kits to come out from them with the, uh, the Oldsmobile and the Dodge Dart. I don't know about you, but I love looking at this old stuff. And uh, these are definitely the museum finds. That's why it's part of this museum series. These are going to eventually, these are going in a box for right now, are going to be locked away until we can get the museum stuff up and running. And we're going to put all of this out for display for you guys to come and take a look at and, and actually see it. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.